Hi guys, it's Unleashed Code with another simple Linux tutorial. Today I'd like to show you how to create a virtual network connection so you can remotely connect to a Linux computer and have its full desktop capabilities. This will allow you to utilize another computer in the house or even a computer that doesn't have a monitor attached to it and do it completely remotely. I'm going to give you two different examples, uh, two different ways of doing this. One is in Linux Mint. Uh, which I'll be showing first, and then I will show you the configuration on a Raspberry Pi. So watch till the end as I go through the configuration for both, and if you want to learn how to do this, stick around, and I'm going to show you how to set up X11 VNC. Thanks for sticking around guys, I just wanted to show you this. This is uh, me actually logged into my Linux laptop which is sat in the lounge. I am on a Windows 10 machine. Let me just show you that now. I'll just minimize all of this. So you go, there's proof. We are uh, sat in Windows 10, but I am logged into my VNC and I can use my Linux computer uh, as if I was sat behind it, so I've got full GUI capability. And that is what we're aiming to do today, is to set this up and make it nice and simple for you guys to do the same. I'm using Linux Mint, which is a Debian based, and if you're using another distribution, you may have to change this setup ever so slightly to meet your distribution requirements. Now, I will be showing, like I said earlier, uh, how I set this up on a Raspberry Pi, it's slightly different. And either if you're a Linux Minute user, just use this. It's absolutely golden. You're going to be good. And if you're having trouble, please try the alternative way of setting this up, which I show later on my Raspberry Pi configuration. I'm sure that will work for you. OK, guys, let's begin. Let me show you how to set up X11 VNC. And that's the bit of software which I mentioned at the beginning, which is actually going to allow you to do this. Now, you want to be doing this on the computer, the host computer. This is the computer that you actually want to connect to. OK, you want to be setting this up in here. So if you want to SSH or Telnet or uh, just get onto that computer physically, then do so and this is what you need to do now please bear in mind this is debian based so i'm using the app package manager if you're using something like red hat you're going to be ipm based or something like seuss you're going to be using a tool like yast so just tailor this to uh, your system requirements so first things first let's get the package sudo oh i'm not even in the box let's go there sudo apt get install and it's called x11 vnc and uh, just hit enter. Obviously, I've already got it, so it just bombs out for me. But for you, it should download and install the package. So guys, now we've got the software installed, let's set it up to have a password. You're obviously going to want a password because uh, we need some sort of uh, authentication over the port. And uh, also, you just don't want any Tom, Dick and Harry logging into your computer and using it as if it was theirs. So to do this, we type in X11 VNC and then minus minus and it is store password. OK, so that's uh, S-T-O-R-E P-A-S-S-W-D. It's not the full word password. Once you've done that, you now need to give it a location. So we'll I'm going to put this in my home directory purely because the fact that it's easy for permissions and this is probably the best way to do it if you're just a single user. Um, there is other ways of doing this, which I'll show you on my Raspberry Pi configuration as well. Anyway, for the time being, I'm just going to put it in my home. So that's unleash code. And I'm going to create a directory called uh, .vnc. And the file name I'll actually give it as P-A-S-S-W-D, password. So we'll sort of have the same naming convention. Once you're happy with that, just click enter. It's going to ask you to verify, uh, it's going to ask you to enter a password. Think of a secure password, put it in, and then it's going to ask you to verify that password. Now's your chance to read that line and make sure that you're going to store the password in the location that you wanted. So for me, home unleash code dot VNC password yes i'm happy with that so i click yes and there we go the password has been written to home unleash code.vnc password 
Okay, now that's all you really need actually to have X11 VNC up and running. You could just type in X11 VNC on the host server now and give it a myriad of options. And trust me, there are a ton. In fact, I'm just going to show you X11 VNC and uh, show you exactly how many options there are. As you can see, there are lots and lots and lots. But uh, that would get you up and running and you could use it, but I want to show you something a bit different. I want to be able to show you how you can just turn on your computer and walk away from it. At the moment, as it stands, you'd have to go to your computer, you'd have to type in X11 VNC and uh, you would have to basically type in a load of options. And then you'd have to come to the computer that you wanted to uh, connect from and then set that up and then log in and use it. And uh, although you could write a script to do that, uh, th there's just a much easier way of doing this and that's to get this all to start up at boot time. Not only is it gonna start at boot time, it's also gonna hook into your display manager. So all you need to do on your remote computer is walk into the room, turn it off. As long as you know that computer's on and you could leave it on forever, as long as you know that computer's on, you can remotely connect to it. And that's what we're trying to do today. You don't want to have to be jumping to that computer, typing in XLM VNC and a load of passwords or starting up a script that you've written and then coming back, you know, to do it. I want you guys to be able just to log in straight off the bat. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to need to know where our display manager is and what display manager we're running. Obviously, in Linux Mint, we're using the Mint display manager. It's called MDM. If you're using something like GNOME, it's going to be GDM for GNOME display manager and so on. You just basically need to know your display manager for your distribution. And what we're actually trying to do is find its initialization script. And when you can find that, uh, you will be able to edit it and put in X11 VNC so that it will be ready for your long login time. So I'm just going to show you where it is on minute, on minute, mint. Um, nano, it's actually at etc and it's MDM for the mint display manager and it's uh, init for initialization script. And we are going to call, I think it's default or is it defaults? Default. And here we are. This is the Mint Display Manager's startup script. We're not interested in any of it. You want to drop all the way down to the very bottom line where it says exit zero. And if you just look above there, you can see I've already set out uh, my command. So books obviously we're running this on a remote display, so it's already set up. And I've got my X11 VNC uh, location and obviously the parameters I want to use to work with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to pull up another little text box and I'm going to go through what you need to type in here just above exit zero and I want to explain to you what each and every single one of these options does so you actually know what you're typing in. It's very easy for me just to say just type this in it doesn't really help you. You need to know why you're typing stuff in and, and what it actually does. And that's what I want to do for you now. Okay, guys, I've just moved the box around and just made it a little bigger so we can see this entire line that we're interested in in its full glory. I'm just going to open up a text editor now. I'm going to cover absolutely everything so you can't see anything except for the line that we're interested in. There we go, like that. And in the text editor, I'm going to go through what this line does and what it means and what are the parameters that we're using. So, uh, first of all, you've got a user bin, it's not S bin, it's a user bin, and it is X11 VNC. Okay, and that's just the location of the program. Okay, and that's gonna start it up. Uh, I'll just put execute execute there and then you know that that's going to be executed okay minus shared is the first parameter that we come across and what this does is that allows for multiple connections so you can actually log in from multiple computers into your x11 vnc server as it stands at the moment it will only allow one connection and if you have multiple computers if you try to connect it will just boot them off so uh, allows for multiple 
multiple connections. The next one that we come to is minus forever. And what this allows us to do is basically log in and log out without closing X11 VNC. As it stands at the moment, if you log out, it's going to actually close X11 VNC on you. So you're going to have to, if you want to log back in, actually have to go back to the um, X11 VNC server computer, the host computer, and you're going to have to start up X11 VNC, chuck this entire line in again, and uh, get it up and running, and then come back to the remote uh, computer, uh, to the computer you want to remotely connect from, and uh, log in again. So forever is very, very important. You don't want to be doing that all the time. So uh, keeps the server running even after you log out. Okay, that's probably the best way to describe it. The next option is minus no DPMS, and this is sort of relevant for me because on my laptop I've got power management saving, and uh, my monitor just sort of dims down and blanks out and goes to a blank screen. So what this does is just forces it to keep the screen alive as long as I'm connected. So I shall put in prevents, prevents, uh, power management saving and keeps the display display alive okay uh, the next option is minus no x damage and that's a pretty important option as well as it currently stands with the frame buffer um, it's basically used to prevent your session crashing when the frame buffer changes and marks the whole screen as damaged, but in actual reality, it's only a very small portion of portion of the screen. Um, and what you by putting in this command, it basically tells the frame buffer buffer if it sees a sort of tear, not to kill X11 VNC. We all get tearing on our screens. It's all small. It's all tiny. Uh, it's very overpowered in X11 VNC. If it detects a small tear, it will report it as damaged, and it can kill the connection. So I shall just say uh, prevents um, frame buffer issues and keep um, lets uh, X11 VNC run with some screen tearing. I think that's the best way to uh, describe it. <clears throat> right. The next option we come to is minus RFB port. RFB port, and it's actually got a port specified of 5,900. That is the default port. Okay, that's the default port for VNC. Um, I will, in a later tutorial, probably show you guys how to do this over a secure connection. So we'll actually use something called port tunneling and do it over SSH. For the meantime, let's get you up and running. RFB port 5900. If you don't put this line in, it's going to default to that anyway. Just in case you've got firewall restrictions, you want to change a port, you can do. Uh, just be wary of which ports you're going to choose. Right, after that, we've got minus display, and you'll see it's got a colon and it's a zero. Okay. I'm just basically specifying here that I want to use display zero. If uh, I had a computer which had several monitors on it, I may put in uh, display one if I actually want to see the uh, other screen. Um, if you don't put in this line in at all, this is an optional line minus display. It will actually, the VNC server will hunt out the best display and just chuck the display that it can find up for you. So it's not an essential line but if you've got multiple monitors, it's something that you may wish to consider. Okay, so uh, I'll just put chooses display to show. <laughs> okay, after you've done that, I've got another option called minus BG. And basically what this does is it just says to the computer, run this, run this process in the background. In the background and uh, that prevents you accidentally closing it by 
uh, mistake or someone else using that computer and accidentally, accidentally closing it for you. Okay, minus z O, not zero, minus O is the next one, and that's for logging. That's to say, please log all the entries. So just go var, we need to point it to the logging directory, so log, and then x11 vnc.log. Okay, and that's really worth doing. In fact, what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to pop this up. I'm going to show you what's stored in one of these logs, and it's super handy to know. It's a var log x11 vnc.log. And as you can see, everything's time stamped in there. If you guys have a problem, okay, this is the first place that you're gonna gonna you're gonna want to come and have a look because you're more than likely gonna find your answer in here as to what went wrong. Okay, so it's got everything in there. It's even got my IP address. It's got the fact that it's display zero and Silver Assassin is the computer that I'm logging into and all the information's in there and uh, keeps nice and healthy log files of what's going on. But last but not least, we've got the last one, which is down here, minus RFB auth and uh, the place of where we saved the password earlier. So I'll just type this in, minus RFB auth, and then uh, the password location. For me, I stored it in my home directory. So unleashed code, and uh, I put it in a directory called .vnc, and then I just named it um, password, didn't I? P-A-S-S-W-D. And that is the location of where I stored the password. And uh, it means the connection has to be authenticated using that password that you chose when we set it up. And uh, you'll be a bit more secure by doing so. So that's that's the line. I mean, that's, that's all of the configuration options. And uh, I hope I've explained them clearly enough to you. Um, so we'll move on to the next step now. Okay, make sure you save the file that we've just been editing. And really the next step is just to restart the display manager. And to restart the display manager, it's actually gonna log me off. But it's gonna be, it's gonna let me show you exactly what I'm talking about, about switching a computer on and walking away from it and knowing that you can log in. This is what we were aiming for throughout this tutorial. So let me just start by going to sudo, it's a service. And it's MDM for me, which is my Mint Display Manager. If you're GNOME Display Manager, it'll be GDM. If you're KDE, it'll be KDM or whatever it may be. And just type space and restart. Okay. And like I said, this will log me off. There we go. Took its time, but it did. And we shall wait for a little bit and I will log back in. I will also show you at the end of this uh, where to get this software VNC that you can log in from a Windows computer or any other computer. So uh, just hang around for that. I will go through all of that as well. Right, it's asking me for authentication. This will be the RFB auth. So you put in the password for that. And there we go. It's brought me to the login screen. So all I needed to do was make sure that my computer was switched on. Okay and it actually takes you to the login screen and it's all up and running, X11 VNC is working. And I can just type in my password for my user account and all in due time. There we go, we're all back up and running as we were. Okay guys, now we've got X11 VNC set up and running on the computer. Now you need actually a bit of software just to uh, log in and use it and use a VNC viewer. And there's a couple of options out there. I'm going to give you two easy options. One of them is Ultra VNC Viewer. You can actually download that and use that piece of software. Or you can uh, use another piece of software, which is a VNC Viewer, which is through your Google Chrome browser, if you're using Google Chrome. I'll show you both options. Let me just close this down. Here we go. Disconnect. We'll come out of this and we'll close it. I've actually got the web page up here. It's uvnc.com, www.uvnc.com for Ultra VNC. And you can just go to the top to downloads and it's going to be in there. Ultra VNC and just give it a download and you're good to go. Install it and all it will ask you is for your IP address. 
Now, if you want to do it through uh, Google Chrome, super easy. I'll just show you how. Uh, just open a new tab. I've actually got uh, it already set, set up on mine. So I'll show you where to go to install it anyway. Click on Apps in the top left. Okay, there it is for me. But what you want to do is go to a Web Store. And if you just type in the Web Store, just type VNC and it's going to come up. Skip all the extensions. You want app and there it is VNC viewer for Google Chrome. Just click add to Chrome. That'll add to Chrome. And whenever you click that wonderful apps button, it's going to be sat there and you can just click on it and it will bring up this box. And you can log in there. So I'll just do 192.168.1. That's to my laptop. Asking for the authentication. And we'll full screen it. And there we go, guys. So that is a neat little tip for you. All right, as promised, I will show you another way of doing this. And uh, we're going to quickly log into my Raspberry Pi, in which I have it set up. And I've got it set up slightly differently. So if this first way didn't work for you, if you're not a Linux Mint user and it actually was uh, a bit different for you and wouldn't play ball, then this is another option for you to try. And uh, this should work for you this time around. So let's log out of this anyway and uh, go into the Raspberry Pi. We'll disconnect and I'll just change over to my Raspberry Pi's IP address and connect. Authenticate as well. Okay, and there we are on my Raspberry Pi. Let me just close that. There we go. Uh, we'll minimize that. We don't need that. We'll get up a new terminal. And just drag it out a bit. Okay, so what are the differences? This is uh, Ubuntu Mate on an ARM, obviously, edition. Um, and uh, you could be using any sort of other operating system, any type of uh, Linux operating system. Uh, just once again, tailor it to your requirements. For us, it's still sudo apt. Uh, so sudo apt get install and it's x11 VNC. Obviously I've got it. So uh, it's just gonna ask my password and I'll just bomb out because I've already got it. And then you just carry on as normal, X11, VNC, right, minus, minus, and it's store, once again, can't type, pass word. Okay, and then the location slightly different now, guys. We're not going to store this in the home directory. We're going to store this in ETC. So to store this in ETC, instantly, it's telling us we're going to need to put in sudo or uh, super user permissions, basically, pseudo permissions. Okay, and uh, dot VNC at the end of this, and we're gonna say password again, exactly like we did before. Okay, so just remember that it's sudo x11 VNC, minus minus store password. You have to be sudo because of the password location, and once you hit enter, it's going to ask for your password. It may ask you for your normal pseudo password first, and then you're going to have to enter your VNC password. Because I've already done this, we're going to skip it. You know what happens. It asks you to uh, confirm that password, and then from there on, it's going to ask you to um, check the location of the password file. And uh, just to be sure, I'm just going to go uh, cat. It was .vnc is where I put it. Just checking. Yes, yeah, in there. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, once that's done, the next thing you do is you don't look for your display manager. This is a slightly different thing. We're going to do this in a startup script. And when your computer starts up in Linux, it will read a local file in the etc directory called rc.local. Okay, and that is where we're going to put a command line. So that's really the only difference. So I'm just going to go sudo. You're going to have to be sudo nano and it's uh, etc. And um, if I remember rightly, it's just ic.local. ic.local. Yes, it is. Um, click enter. Yes, I want to edit. And as you can see, it's a much smaller file, this for the ic.local. But this is uh, exactly where you want to put it. Just once again, above the exit zero and uh, put in the same line that we put in before. And mine's just a bit higgery-jiggery pokered about. 
and there's just one extra piece of information that you need to put in rather than just having RFB auth as you can see we've got an extra authorization marked here at the end so I'm just going to pull up a little text pad here and type it out for you as well so it's nice and clear uh, I didn't realize this is going to be dark themed never mind it will uh, still be the same you've got a minus auth not rfb auth and you need to start the location of where your display manager runs from so that's a var and run light dm that's the light display manager for ubuntu mate that it uses and a root and its terminal is zero so colon zero and you want to write afterwards use pw for use the password and chuck in an ampersand side to basically just say go to the next line you've finished executing the script so that's the only difference is really this and where you type this so it's in the uh, etcrc.local that will get run at startup all the options are the same and uh, it's just an additional line of minus auth and then the location of where your uh, display manager actually runs from. So for this, it's var run light dm root and colon zero for the display and then just put minus password, use pw. And that will ask for your proper credentials to log in with. So that's it. That's the only difference. Uh, once you've done that, obviously uh, save the file. I can just close that out of the way. Okay, just make sure it's all saved and close it. And what we're going to do now, I'm just going to quickly check to make, see, make sure rc.local is running as a service. I'll go sudo service and minus minus status. And I believe it's all. Let's see if rc.local comes up as a service in there. Yes, it does. rc.local, seen it, happy with that. Okay, so we need to just go service, sudo service, sorry, sudo service, and the service we want to start is rc.local and restart it. Okay, and this will boot you out. There we go. Booted us out. Just got to wait a little bit to log back in. Should be enough time. And there we go. All back up and running. So there we have it, guys. That is a Linux setup of X11 VNC and how you can use VNC to remotely connect to computers and also where to put all the scripts and how to do it. So it's nice and easy that you can only just go along and just turn on your computer and walk away. And then you know you can log into that computer whenever you want. So much better than having to go to the terminal and set it up or SSH into the computer and set up that massive log command line every time or a fire up script. It's just, it, it happens as the computer starts in both cases. So there we go, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Please click that subscribe button if you wanna see some more. I will be doing a lot more Linux tutorials in the future and I shall bid you all farewell. Thanks for watching. Hope I've helped you a lot today. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.